Kia ora koutou katoa. I'm Dr. Paul Wood, and today we're going to talk about social neuroscience. Social neuroscience is the study of how the brain operates as a function of our interactions with each other. And this provides an important insight into why coaching is important from a neurological perspective. It also gives us some important insights to more effectively be able to engage with other people and to depersonalize the annoying experiences we have when others interact with us in a way that doesn't meet our social needs. So the SCARF model is going to be the focus of today. And the SCARF model comes from the work of a guy called Dr. David Rock. What a name, eh? Dr. Rock. Dr. Rock, when an interviewed 30 of the world's preeminent neuroscientists to figure out what were some of the similarities in their findings when it comes to understanding what causes people to feel pleasant emotions when they interact with each other or to experience unpleasant ones. If you want to be simple about how the brain works, what we can talk about is this. When you interact with someone, either your approach system is activated or your avoid system is activated. If your approach system is activated, you are experiencing pleasant emotions. Neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, are going off in your brain. And if you're experiencing a high level of these, you go into what in psychology is called broaden and build. Broaden and build is the phenomena we experience when we broaden our perspectives, when we're more open to learning, to exploring, when we feel curious, and it builds our comfort and our capacity to try out new things, to take risks, to experiment. And when people prompt that approach system in our brain to be activated, we find them rewarding to deal with. And what that means is we would seek them out again. However, as I mentioned, there's another system in the brain, the avoid system. The avoid system goes off when we detect a potential threat in the environment. And in the case of social neuroscience, that threat is another person. Now, when I use the term threat, I'm using it in a technical sense. I don't literally mean that you are unsafe that someone might do damage to you physically. I simply mean that they are an aversive stimulus. In other words, they prompt unpleasant emotions and you would want to avoid them. And if someone prompts strong unpleasant emotions in you, then you can go into a fight, flight or freeze response, which is the exact opposite of broaden and build. We're shut down, we get tunnel vision, our ability to think, to problem solve, to consider is reduced because the part of the brain that takes over is the reactive part that's about keeping us safe. Now, what we know from the SCARF model is that there are some things when we interact with each other that can prompt either those pleasant emotions or those unpleasant ones. And the SCARF model captures some universal ingredients here. They're universal in the sense that if anyone experiences an increase in the factors captured by the SCARF acronym, they will feel pleasant emotions. That approach system in their brain will be activated. And if anyone feels that those factors captured in the SCARF model are diminished or reduced, then they will experience unpleasant emotions. They will go into that threat state. Now, it's true for everyone, but what we also know is that some people have stronger hot buttons than others. For some people, certain triggers are just easier to go off for the better or for the worse. So as I go through this model, I want you to self-reflect and think, which of these resonates more strongly with me? And by the way, team, this is not like your values. It's not the stuff you aspire to that you would hope to be true for you. It's more like your personality. It's just the natural differences and preferences that we have in the world. So as I go through, I want you to think hand on heart, if I'm honest with myself, what are the things that most resonate with me? And through that understanding, 
we can also understand how we can more effectively be rewarding to deal with when it comes to others. So the first letter in the SCARF model is S. In the traditional model, this stands for status, my relative importance and standing compared to other people. I personally prefer to think of the S letter as status slash significance. Because if you have a normal level of social need in this area, I think for most of us, it's not really about relative importance compared to others. It's just about feeling significant when we're interacting with other people, feeling that we're seen and valued, that our contribution matters, that we're respected. And if I interact with you, and as a result of that interaction, you come away feeling more seen and valued, you'll have pleasant emotions. You'll find me rewarding to deal with. You'll go into that broaden and build state potentially. But if you interact with me and you walk away feeling in any way diminished, not respected, spoken over, dismissed, you will have unpleasant emotions. However, if this is more of a social trigger, more of a hot button for you, it might be more about status. And often a clue that someone is what we call a capital S is that they're more driven to achieving things that give them a greater sense of recognition and contribution. Often that might be progress in their career, but also it can look different ways in different areas. Often it can be seen in terms of hyper-competitiveness. Do any of you know people who everything's a competition with them? Alternatively, you might see it in status symbols. Any of you know people who are just a bit more drawn to those, you know, those high brand, high end purses or watches or Maseratis? And there are some cultural differences you can observe there, but that's some of the things you often associate with a capital S. And if you're dealing with someone who's a capital S, in those interactions, those small little bits of recognition go even further than they do for most people. The next letter down in the SCARF model is C. C is about certainty. I've spoken about the high need for certainty we have as a species on many occasions. Just look back through the catalogue of these clips if you're interested. We like certainty as a species because it makes us feel safe. And if I interact with you in a way that leaves you feeling you have a greater sense of what's coming up, what's expected of you, what success will look like, and that you can rely on what I'm saying, positive emotions. But if you walk away from an interaction with me feeling that you can't rely on what I'm saying, or now you have less of a sense of what the future holds, what it's expected of you, what success looks like, unpleasant emotions. And if you're a capital C, if you have a higher need for certainty than others, you may have previously had feedback that you provide too much detail. And if you're in a managerial position, if you're in a senior position, you might be prone to micromanagement. Interestingly, when we think of micromanagement, we often think it's about a lack of trust, whereas actually micromanagement most of the time is about a high need for certainty. The next letter in the model is autonomy. We all have a need to feel that we're in control of our lives, that we have freedom of choice, that we're actually involved in decisions and in, in deciding how we approach things and what our lives look like. The reason we don't like micromanagement is because it reduces our sense of autonomy. And if you're someone who's a capital A, who has a high need for autonomy, you're probably someone who just likes to be left alone to get on with things and doesn't naturally consult with other people. You're the type of person who probably uses expressions like all hooey, no dooey, and just likes to move on, get on with stuff. You know, that's great, but you're also a micromanager's nightmare. So if you're someone who relates to that high need for autonomy, then you might want to provide more detail than comes natural to you to those people who have a greater need for certainty. Next letter down, relatedness. This is the fundamental friend or foe stuff of a social species. We all have the need to feel that we belong and we're accepted. And if I interact with you in a way that makes you feel, I've got your back, we're moving in the same direction, that I care for you, positive emotions. But if I interact with you in a way that leaves you feeling I would throw you under the bus to serve my own objectives, or that you are the team I am against, 
unpleasant emotions. If you're a capital R, if you have a really high need for relatedness compared to other people, you're probably a lovely person to work with because social harmony will be even more important for you than it is for other people. However, the dark side, the shadow of that harmony means that sometimes it'll be even harder for you to have difficult conversations with other people or to share your thoughts and your views because of concerns about getting offside or having to deal with conflict. If you relate to that, here's something to keep in mind. When you do voice your views, your expressions, sometimes you do trade popularity, but you trade popularity for respect, for significance, People will hold you in greater esteem if they believe they'll get an honest view and opinion from you, rather than they'll just hear whatever you think they want you to hear. The last letter, fairness. F for fairness. We all have a need to feel equity in exchange, that we're fairly treated, that we're not exploited, that we're not ripped off in any way. If you're a capital F, you'll probably hear it in your language. You're probably someone who regularly talks about things being fair or unfair. And it's going to be important for you to feel that you're involved in win-win situations, that all sides are taken to account. In psychology, we often talk about the different ways people meet these needs. And the two most researched and relevant relate to that status slash significance and relatedness. Often, when people are trying to meet their need for status and significance, they will use what's called prestige or dominance. Prestige is when you develop the skills and the knowledge that other people admire and respect and place value on. Dominance, on the other hand, that is where you tear people down and you establish your place through being more important than others via things like power, via things like dismissiveness, talking over people. If you're someone who has a high need for status and significance, the path is the prestige path, the pursuit of mastery. Another one we talk about relates to the relatedness domain, and we talk about the difference between common enemy and common humanity. Common humanity is about expanding the circle. If I don't agree with your views or opinions, if I find you difficult to deal with, I try to expand the circle to include you. I try and think, let me understand things from your point of view. Let me give you the benefit of the doubt. Let me try and put myself in your shoes. Let me give you the best possible interpretation of your behavior. Hard work though, right, eh? Being that bigger person, the easier road is the low road, and that's the common enemy path. And this is where what we do is we form in-groups and out-groups. What we do is we go, it's us versus them. And this is often why you end up with silos in organizations where you have one team that has a high uh, experience of relatedness because they work well together, but they see themselves as not part of the broader organization, working in harmony. So we have to be careful to make sure that we don't create those us versus them scenarios. All right, team, that gives you an idea of the SCARF model. And in a coaching context, it gives you an idea of the different social needs that people are trying to meet and how we can ensure we're effective and being rewarding to deal with, to make sure we're not diminishing any of those things when we interact with others so that their perspective is broader and we build their capacity to experiment, to take risks, to try new things out. All right, team. Aroha nui. Big love. Big respect. You are seen and valued. Catch up soon.